Hey, what's going on guys? It is Dives, Mr. Crockpot on Twitter. The NFL Draft is just a few months away. What better time to break down my top 10 edge rushers for this year's class and by far one of the most impressive groups in this NFL Draft. Let's start out with some honorable mentions. First honorable mention, we have Logan Hall out of Houston. Logan Hall gets by on relentless pursuit and hustle rather than athleticism. This is a defensive end prospect that's average to above average in many, many areas. However, he's got great size, six foot six, 275 pounds. He's got great power and he's got that ability, some versatility to dominate on the interior. That alone is probably good enough to get his name called on day two of the NFL draft. My next honorable mention is Zach Harrison out of Ohio State. Frame and athleticism are the first two things you need to know about Zach Harrison. Six foot six with legit athleticism and a long build. He reportedly ran a 447 40 yard dash, so he will surely be a media darling of the upcoming combine. However, this guy is not as quick off the snap. He has inconsistent play, five games of one or fewer pressures last season, and he's pretty raw when it comes to technique. This is one of the ultimate boomer bust picks in this entire draft class. My last honorable mention is Cameron Thomas out of San Diego State. Similar to Kingsley Agnagbar, Cameron Thomas is an extremely interesting prospect that presents immense versatility. Playing inside as a defensive tackle in 2020, Cameron Thomas moved to the outside in 2021 and racked up an FBS leading 72 pressures last season. At 6 foot 5 and 275 pounds, Cameron Thomas would thrive in a scheme that allows him to roam across the defensive line and focus on getting to the quarterback. With that said, let's get to my number 10. My number 10 edge rusher in this class is Arnold Abikity out of Penn State. Draft range, I've got a day two grade on this guy. Arnold Abikity is a premier pass rusher with tremendous speed off the edge. Abikity has everything you're looking for off the snap with excellent quickness, hand power, and an arsenal of moves that allows him to punish tackles. He doesn't have an elite first step, nor is he the most fluid athlete. However, Arnold Abikini will thrive in a defensive scheme focused on allowing him to get to the quarterback. He's a guy that would really benefit from having a defined role his rookie season as he builds up that strength, as he builds up that technique. He'll most likely be a situational pass rusher early in his career, which I don't want to sound as a negative. Uh, Arnold Abikini will have to continue his development, most notably strength, that ability to impact the run game, and, and show that he's a true three down edge rusher in the NFL. However, getting to the quarterback, this guy has a lot of skills that make him very intriguing. Let's look at the highlights. So far. And it's blocked. The Nittany Lions turning away the Badgers. Petrus. Petrus, and he's sacked. My number nine prospect in this class is my Jai Sanders out of Cincinnati. I've got a day two grade on this guy, and it is truly incredible how deep this edge rushing class is this season. My Jai Sanders is yet another elite pass rushing defensive end with a great first step. First up, his frame immediately stands out, standing at six foot five and long arms. That frame really shines when he's disrupting passing lanes on tape, as evident by his 12 passes defended during his last three seasons at Cincinnati. Sanders needs to add bulk, especially in that lower body, but he makes up for it in explosiveness and great technique. My Jai Sanders also needs to work on being more consistent against the run. He tends to over pursue at times, and he would clearly benefit just like Arnold Abikini from a defined role early on his rookie season as he adds strength uh, to that incredible frame. Because of this, I think my Jai Sanders may benefit more from playing in a 3-4 rather than a 4-3. Regardless, this guy is ridiculously talented and worthy of being selected anywhere from rounds one through three. Let's look at some film. Start making plays, coach said we've been sleeping on you. Taken down by my Jai Sanders. Good job of buying time and just simply being tough. Third down and eight. They come with a blitz again, and he's thrown down by Sanders. Against Sauce Gardner. There it is. 
White looked that way. He's going to get swallowed and engulfed. Number eight in my edge rushing class, I've got Kingsley Enigbari out of South Carolina. Versatility, versatility, versatility. I see this guy in the draft range of rounds one and rounds two. This is a prospect that doesn't have elite athleticism, but possesses the ability to play across the defensive line. At South Carolina, Enigbari played inside, outside, even dropped into coverage on a consistent basis. In addition to having the athleticism to backpedal and make plays in coverage, he can also get to the quarterback. Enigbari has several moves that allows him to beat his man at the point of attack and routinely get in the backfield. Off the snap, there are some concerns. He doesn't have elite quickness and will need to be coached up to build his technique to be effective at the NFL. While he's a solid athlete, he's not an elite one, and I have some concerns about his ability to cover tight ends at the next level. This is a very good prospect, but one that is most likely best suited for a 3-4 rather than a 4-3. After watching tape, he seems to be better at rushing the quarterback at this time. He needs to build up his football intelligence and hand power, but he certainly possesses all the traits of a first round pick in this year's draft class. Let's watch the film. Taylor's under pressure. And that's JJ Nekbari. Balls were 43% on third down last year. In trouble, Garantano slips out of one guy, but can't out of the next. Big sack for the Gamecocks. And brought pressure right up the middle. No, just four. Garantano standing up, but now he's down. And the ball was jarred out for a second. J.J. Enigbari gets home. Number seven on my list of edge rushers is Drake Jackson out of USC. I've got a round one, two grade on this dude. You got to love his improvement from his sophomore to junior season. During that time, he went from a 66.6 pass rushing grade, according to PFF, as a sophomore to 87.7 during his junior season. This is a pure athlete that got by in college with his very good to great athleticism. In terms of getting to the quarterback, he's got a lot of qualities you're looking for in a starting NFL edge rusher. With some coaching, this is a prospect that has a very good chance of being a solid starter in the league for a long, long time. The downside to Drake Jackson is his versatility. This is one of the purest pass rushers in the class, and you shouldn't really expect more than that from the jump. Drake Jackson will require further seasoning at the next level, but the physical traits are all there. His position, such as whether or not he's best suited at linebacker, is a little bit also in question. However, Drake Jackson possesses very good potential following in a year, spending the weight room and building strength in the NFL. Let's look at some film. With the first stop holding that middle firm. Now Lewis, pressure, swung around and sacked. And there's a good start for USC. Stanley's in the slot, Broussard swings out. That's where Lewis tries to go, it's intercepted. That's an interception and Drake Jackson is dragged down. Not a rhythm, one touched the ball for 50 minutes. Game six, Cone in trouble and he is sacked. The one guy who brings the pressure from the edge on this team, Drake Jackson. My number six edge rusher in this class is Jermaine Johnson out of Florida State. I've got a round one, two grade on this guy, and this is a big time prospect to watch out for during the upcoming combine. He ran a 4-5 40 yard dash in high school, and his measurables were certainly make him one of the premier standouts. The first thing to know about Jermaine Johnson is his elite athleticism at six foot five and 262 pounds. However, this is a prospect that doesn't just get by with his insane athleticism. Jermaine Johnson has a solid mix of moves at the point of attack that allows him to consistently get into the backfield. And, and while he did very well against Evan Neal, the great Evan Neal last season, there is evidence last year that he struggled against stronger tackles at times. He needs to continue working on his technique at the next level, but his combination of elite athleticism and production last year will certainly make him a selection in rounds one or two of the 22 NFL draft. Expect to hear this guy's name mentioned a ton during this year's draft combine. Let's watch some film. Side towards the numbers on the bottom of your screen. First down, Cone, pressured, and Johnson gets him again. Clean pocket. No, not that clean. Jermaine Johnson, the sack. How good is Georgia's defensive front that Jermaine Johnson could not crack their starting line? Five, sack that gets erased and gives North Carolina a first down. How? Hit from behind and brought down. 
work, work, work over the top, chip the pack, get through him, get through him, retrace. My number five favorite edge rusher in this year's class is Trayvon Walker out of Georgia. I've got a round one, two grade on this guy. He's one of my favorite prospects in this year's class. This guy fits the Eagles scheme to a T with his elite versatility and ability to play inside or out. While he doesn't have that elite twitch that David Ajabo or Jermaine Johnson possess, he makes up for it for being strong against the run with very good quickness and ability to make big plays down the field. As good as he is at getting to the quarterback, he's got great quickness to win against slower offensive linemen in the interior. What I like most about Trayvon Walker is his ability to drop back and hold his own in space. Trayvon Walker occasionally dropped back into coverage for Georgia and his fluid hips and ability to change speeds on a whim was really impressive to watch. A 6 foot 5, 275 pound edge rusher that can be weaponized in multiple alignments with his kind of football intelligence will always have a roster spot in the NFL. Defensive coordinators must be salivating with this guy's ability to make an impact in a variety of ways. Let's watch the tape. My number four edge rusher in this class is David Ajabo out of Michigan. I've got around one, two grade on David Ajabo, and I've seen this guy anywhere from the top of the first round to the back of the second round. He's one of those, you know, top boomer bust prospects in this class. While David Ajabo possesses elite measurables and physical traits, he's incredibly raw. Uh, this is one of the biggest climbers in this year's draft class, six foot five. 250 pounds with excellent length and explosiveness. This elite athleticism and upside makes him one of the more interesting names in the 2022 class. However, there are some concerns about David Ajabo that, that truly simply cannot be ignored. David Ajabo will require moderate amounts of coaching and seasoning at the next level to harness that immense potential. He needs to work on his technique off the line, and he struggled at times against good competition last year. Unlike the top three edge rushers in this class, which we'll get to in a bit, his inconsistent motor and lack of feel for stopping the run certainly make me question his ability to be a three down edge rusher in the NFL. However, that elite athleticism will surely entice some team to take him in the first round, roll that dice, and work on untopping that immense potential. Let's watch the tape. Boom. In trouble! That crossing route, good job by Clifford finding him. Look out, he gets back at the 32 yard line. David Ajabo. My number three edge rusher in the class is George Karlaftis out of Purdue. I've got a top 15 grade on this dude. George Kalaftis is one of the most athletic and physically impressive edge rushers in the class, standing at six foot four, 275 pounds. He's a plug and play defensive beast that can play anywhere on the line, pressure the quarterback and stop the run. He's one of the most well-rounded edge rushers in this class. Similar to Aiden Hutchinson, he's quick to get into the backfield using his elite strength at the point of attack, but he doesn't have that elite twitch to drop back and hold up against the run. That's not saying he isn't good against the run he's just limited in this area when comparing him to the top two edge rushers in this class george kalaftis is destined to be a fan favorite from the jump given his tireless motor and effort he doesn't have that elite length like the top two edge rushers in this class but he makes up for it with technique and pure power his lack of length certainly could lead kalaftis being shifted inside at times at the next level but regardless and considering how many double teams and triple teams this guy received last year you know that george kalaftis is one of those prospects that will make an instant impact his rookie season let's watch the film third and eight he's the greek freak for a reason no one picked him up ball loose 
That was a flip forward. That was a that was a pass. Ship team. This is the meanwhile not the offensive series that Illinois. This game here for the Illini, and out of his hands, Purdue picking it up. George Karloftis with the pressure. It would be difficult for Northwestern's pass protection. Oh, my, and right on cue there is Karloftis. My number two edge rusher in this class is Aiden Hutchinson out of Michigan. I got a top five grade on this guy. Aiden Hutchinson has some incredible moments this year, most notably against Ohio State, where he was nothing short of remarkable. 15 pressures that game. He had 12 overall sacks and six sacks during those last three games. That is no joke. As great as he was last year, he beat up college tackles with his elite athleticism. Similar to Thibodeau, the sky is the limit for Aiden Hutchinson, and he's only beginning to scratch the surface of how good he can truly be. The fact that we're sitting here and debating whether or not this guy should be number one or two over Kayvon Thibodeau is just a massive compliment to his 2021 season. Aiden Hutchinson's motor is off the charts. This is a guy who would be best in a blitz heavy scheme that lines him up across the line of scrimmage and cause havoc in the backfield. While Thibodeau offers more feel for the game and support against the run, Hutchinson's burst and technique to punish tackles at the point of attack is incredible. This is a pure pass rushing weapon that should become an instant star the second he puts on an NFL jersey. Let's watch some film. They scored was on their first drive of the game. Ellaby, that's away by Hutchinson. And going back, did one. Apparently they just got it off and they got stuffed and the ball came out. He was looking in the direction of Otten and now he's looking at the turf. Third down and eight, Halinski in the pocket, Halinski. 97 gets him. He missed communication. So Mike Yersich, the coordinator in the background. Here comes Hutchinson. He knocks the ball free. Number one edge rusher in the 2022 class is Kayvon Thibodeau out of Oregon. I've got a top five grade on this dude. I'm not going to overreact here. Despite Aiden Hutchinson's recent play and rise, Kayvon Thibodeau remains as my number one edge rusher in the 2022 class at this time. His production during the 2021 season was so strong. A 91 and a half pass rushing grade and 46 pressures. His physical tools are off the charts. With a little coaching on technique, you can pencil in Kayvon Thibodeau as a future star in the NFL. But for me, what puts Thibodeau at the top is his versatility. At Oregon, Thibodeau lined up at linebacker and even in the slot. Whether it's against the run or the pass, the first thing to know about Kayvon Thibodeau is that he possesses incredible burst off the line. He's got an outstanding motor and outstanding feel for the game to find the football. His elite lateral mobility and athleticism not only allows him to get into the backfield, but he can go sideline to sideline. Kayvon Thibodeau, for me, is a terrific prospect and my number one edge rusher in this class. St. Pope in motion, play action, hit as he throws, and the ball goes backward, picked up, Mace Funa for the Ducks inside the five. Ducks bring some pressure, can't take a sack, and the ball is on the ground. He was a little too patient back there, Thibodeau came around the edge. On third and ten, pressure, drops, Thibodeau. Some plays in the first half, 20, and will never win. Rising, dropped in the back, and finally, Kayvon Thibodeau does. Do you guys like what you saw? Be sure to smash that like and subscribe button. Message me, DM me on Twitter, at Mr. Crockpot, for anything NFL Draft. Be on the lookout for my upcoming cornerback and safety rankings uh, of this class. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Stay awesome, everybody.